video we will be going through exponents and thirds that fall into the math syllabus. So first and foremost, it's essential that you are familiar with the laws that you will use when you work with exponents. So if you have two variables with exponents and you multiply them together, your exponents get added. So if you had an x squared times x cubed, it would be x to the 5. 3 plus 2 is 5, therefore x to the 5. If you have two variables with exponents divided by each other, it's going to be your top variable, the exponent minus your bottom variable's exponent. So say x cubed divided by x squared will be x because 3 minus 2 is 1 and therefore x. If you have a variable with an exponent in a bracket raised to another exponent, it is the variable to an exponent of your first exponent times your second exponent. If you have a times b in a bracket raised to an exponent, you can distribute the exponent to each variable where it is a to the m times b to the m. In b, you must remember that a bracket of a plus b to the m will not be a to the m plus b to the m. It does not work like that and it's a an error that is made by many students and yeah, just know that you cannot do that. Then it is also good to know some of the definitions. Well, you should know all of the definitions in order to be able to work through these easily and efficiently. So any variable raised to the power of zero is one, a hundred to the zero is one, x to the zero is one. Anything to the negative exponent is one over the variable to the same exponent. So a to the negative two would be one over a squared. The root of a variable is simply the variable to the power of a half. And the root, the mth root of a variable is simply the variable to one over m. So if you had the cube root of a, it would simply be a to the one over three. If you have the mth root of a to the power of n, it's simply a to the exponent of your power over your root. So it would be a to the n over m. If you have a over b in a bracket to the negative m, you can simply flip the fraction in order to make it a positive exponent. Now that we've got the laws and the definitions out of the way, we move on to the simplification of expressions. So in an exam or test, you'd be given something like this. And the first thing you should be seeing is we need to get it into the same basis so that we can work with it. Now, here it's quite easy. We can see we're going to be working with twos and threes as two and three are factor of six. So you can break this down into two and three. So we leave the top because we're already in two and three. We leave the first part, we're already in three. However, this needs to be broken down. We would break it down into a bracket of two times three to the four n. We then distribute the four n to get three to the four n times two to the four n. Now we've got variables with exponents. We then go two to the three n divided by two to the four n. So we go three n minus four n, one of our laws times three to the three n plus one minus four n minus one, because there is an exponent of one on this three. This is all exponent laws that you need to know. Simplify that, you get two to the negative n times three to the negative n, which is one over two to the n times three to the n, which is another exponent law. Negative, we simply go one over. If we look at something like this, where we've got exponents with the same base with exponents and we've got a plus or minus, we need to know to factorize. We need to somehow get a common factor between the terms so that we can factorize. Now we can see it's gonna be a two to the X. So we break this down into two to the X times two. By our law, we now reverse the law. And we now take out a two to the X, leaving a two minus one for one here over two to the X, these two cancel and we get two minus one, which is one. In this case over here, we, 
it is easiest to solve this using substitution, where you have something to the 2n and an n, we can see that we're not going to be able to factorize this because we've got a 2 here. But we can also see that 5 to the 2n plus 1 and 5 to the n plus 1, 5 to the 2n is simply 5 to the n squared. So we can use substitution. We let 5 to the n equal k. We break this down into 5 to the 2n times 5, reversing our law, plus 5 to the n times 5, once again reversing the law here, over 5 to the 2n minus 1. But now we've said 5 to the n equals k. Well, if 5 to the n equals k, then 5 to the 2n will be 5k squared. Now we have... 5 to the n, which we've said is k, times 5, so it's plus 5k. We've said 5 to the 2n is k squared, so it's over k squared minus 1. We factorize the top, factorize the bottom, and we get a cancellation of two terms. We're left with 5k over k, plus, k minus 1. We then sub our 5n back in, so 5 times 5 to the n over 5 to the n minus 1, and we get 5 to the n plus 1 over 5 to the n minus 1. In the same way over here, we're going to use our laws. x minus y over x to the half minus y to the half. We know that x to the half is simply the root of x, and y to the half is simply the root of y. So we go x minus y over root x minus root y. We can factorize this into the product of two squares. So we then take the square root of that plus the square root of that times the square root minus the square root. We, we get a cancellation of these two terms, which leaves us with root x plus root y. Remember over here, the fact that we've got a minus and a minus indicates to us that we have to factorize. The only way you can factorize this is by splitting your top into these two factors. When we deal with exponential equations, we need to get both sides into the same base so that we can compare our exponents on either side. Over here, we can see we're going to be dealing with a base 3. So we convert this to a 3, taking a 2 up and multiplying through. We get 3 to the 4x plus 2. Over here, we know that this is actually 3 to the negative 3 by reversing our law. Once we've got the same bases, we can then compare the exponents. We now go 4x plus 2, this exponent over here, equals negative 3, this exponent over here. We can then solve for x, and we've solved for the x in this exponent. Over here, we do the same thing. However, we need to multiply this out to make it simpler. We go 5 to the x squared plus x equals 5 squared, breaking this down into a base of 5. We can then compare the exponents, x squared plus x from here equals 2 from here, and solve it as a simple quadratic equation. When we have pluses and minuses of different terms, we will have to factorize. As we can see here, we can see we will have to take out a 3 to the x. It is the only common factor. So we do that, and we are left with 3 minus a third, which is equal to our constant. We can then go 3 to the x and divide this constant by this, and we get 9 root 3. 3 to the x is therefore 3 squared times 3 to the half. Remember that this is a law that root 3 is 3 to a half. When you multiply these two, you add your exponents, as we've done here. So 3 to the x equals this. Now we can ex expand and say that our x exponent here equals this exponent. Therefore, x equals 5 over 2. In the more complicated examples, we will have to use substitution. So as we can see here, 2 to the 2x and 2 to the x, we cannot take out a common factor. So, But we can see that 2 to the x squared is simply 2 to the 2x. So we can use a quadratic substitution. We let 2 to the x equal k, so 2 to the 2x is k squared, 
minus 3 times k because 2 to the x is k minus 4 equals 0. We solve that as a simple quadratic and we get k equals 4 or k equals negative 1. We then sub this 2 to the x back in for k. Therefore, 2 to the x equals 4 and 2 to the x equals minus 1. Well, we know that 2 to an exponent cannot be negative. So this gives us no solution. And 2 to the x equals 4. We then go 2 to the x equals 2 squared. Therefore, x equals 2. We compare the two exponents. Over here, we've got the same sort of equation. We get a th we, s we simplify this down to 3 to the 2x plus 2 by multiplying through by 2 minus 10 times 3 to the x plus 1. We let 3 to the x equal k, then this is 9k squared because we have a 3 to the 2x times 3 squared minus 10k because 3 to the x is k plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, if you solve this, k equals 1 or k equals 1 over 9, we then bring 3 over x, 3 to the x back for where we have k and we get 3 to the x equals k or 3 to the x equals 1 over 9 and we get x equals 0 because you 1 is actually 3 to the 0. So x equals 0 because you look at your two exponents and 3 to the x equals 1 over 9. 3 to the x equals 3 to the negative 2. Therefore, x equals negative 2. In an example such as this one, where we see we've got a denominator, we are often, they often try and trick us. Simply multiply this out to get 5, to five, if you were to multiply your 5 to the x by 5 to the x, you would get 5 to the 2x. So that is what we do. We go 5 to the 2x minus 24 times 5 to the x because that's how LCD equals 25. As we've done above, we can see that this is simply this is simply the square of this. So we let 5 to the x equal k. Therefore, it's k squared minus 24k minus 25 equals 0. We get k equals 25 or k equals minus 1. We know that 5 to an exponent cannot be negative 1, so it gives us no solution. And 5 to the x, we break 25 into 5 squared. We compare the exponents and x equals 2. Now we move on to equations with rational exponents. Uh, so we can see that in an equation such as this one, if we were to square x to the half in a bracket to the 2, we'd go a half times a 2 to work that out and we'd get x. Therefore, we can see that x is simply the square of x to the half. You could look at it by saying x to the half is root x, well then x is the square of root x. Therefore, we let x to the half equal m. Then we say x is m squared and x to the half is m minus 6 equals 0. We simply solve this and we get m equals 3 or m equals minus 2. We sub x to the half back in here and now we simply use our calculator to take the half root of 3 and the half root of negative 2 which is no solution because x to the half cannot be negative. In this case x to the 3 over 2 equals 8 it's easier to take out a 3 and go x to the half to the 3 equals 8. Because it's a cube root, you keep the sign, so you do not need to take a negative. So you simply go x to the half equals 2, therefore x equals 4. You must check this answer, however. When we have, as we do here, we take out a 2 so that we can get it simply x to the 1 over 3 squared, so we can square root the right. When you square root, you must take a positive negative because square roots are always positive or negative. Therefore, x to the 1 of 3 equals positive or negative 2. Therefore, you'd take the third root of 2 and the third root of negative 2, which will give you plus and minus 8.